Uh, is this, am I talking to Judith? Can you hear me? You are. Hello. <laughs> how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Great. Thanks. Let me just quit a couple of things that might cause nonsense while we're trying yeah. to do this. We don't want any nonsense. Exactly. No nonsense oh, here. <laughs> put the phone on silent. <laughs> It's nothing Good. worse, isn't there, when you hear a bing halfway through. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know, yeah. So how are you? I'm really good, thanks. Thanks so much for doing this, by the way. It's fantastic. That's all right, That's all it's, right. my pleasure. I've, um, I've been verging on really excited stroke, absolutely nervous, like I've not been this nervous for ages, and I don't know quite why. <laughs> well, you shouldn't be. Um, my bad reputation died a long time ago. <laughs> Is the sound all right? Is that loud enough for you? I think so. It sounds okay. I'm not okay. booming over you, am I? Because I can no, never no, no. tell till I listen back and then it's so... No, but, there's uh, no echoes or anything from here. So super. as long as I'm loud enough for you, that's good. I think so. Um, I'll turn my volume up just so I can hear you a bit better. Um, so it's obviously recording just now, so that's mm -hmm. good. I don't want to forget that because, you know, a bit amateur if I've uh, forgotten to record the interview. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, is there anything that I can't ask you? Not that I'm going to be, like, prying completely into your, uh, your no, life. No, if there's but... anything I don't want to answer, I won't answer it. So. Yes, that seems reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> And um, my plan would be, obviously, I'll try and sort of edit down the audio just to put some bits into my radio shows and then I'll put the Zoom up on YouTube at the end if you're happy enough and, sure. you know, just have it as a wee video for folk to watch, hopefully. Yeah, no problem. Awesome. Um, OK, well, we just make a wee start and I don't mind how long it takes or how little it takes. Have you got any... I put an hour on the Zoom, but that wasn't to sort of... Uh, I really, oh, okay, it's longer than I was expecting. I, I need to be somewhere. Uh, if we could keep it to like about a half hour, that would, Certainly. Be, that would be great. That's fine. No bother at all. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, okay, so welcome. Thank you for doing this, Miles. Can I call you Miles? Is it yeah. Milo? Whatever you like, I'll answer to pretty much anything <laughs> these days. <laughs> I'll keep it clean then. Um, <laughs> so obviously at the moment, we'll talk a wee bit about your solo tour if you want, because I think that'll be something that's clearly taking up a bit of your time. How's it all going out on the road just now? Really good. It's just me sitting on a stool, cracking a few jokes, playing a few tunes for 90 minutes. And um, I took, well, because of the forced... Um, absence of being on stage because there's COVID mm. and all that. And I'd actually got quite sick of doing acoustic gigs by about summer 2019. Yeah. So, so when we couldn't do it through the lockdowns, it worked out great for me. I, ne I needed a rest from it. Yeah. And uh, and then going back to it last September or October, I think I started doing acoustic gigs again. Mm. I, I was really surprised at how much I enjoyed it um and and that's still going on I'm, i really enjoy every night yeah it's yeah great. are you mixing it up do you do just purely solo material do you do any wonder stuff stuff while you're out by yourself oh it's mostly the wonder stuff ah okay yes probably like 10 or 15 minutes of it is non-wonder <laughs> stuff stuff <laughs> uh I, you know people do ask me why don't i do more from solo records or records that i've done with erica knuckles over the years mm -hmm. And the truth is, I kind of lose half of the audience when I do those <laughs> songs. I mean, I'm very lucky, like, everything seems to sell out wherever I've been going. I mean, they're very small rooms. Yeah. Um, but I think people just want to hear familiar stuff, and, and not everybody carried on by yeah. every single record I put out. So, And I don't care. I'm fine with that. I'm fine yeah. with that. Well, I mean, I have to say, because we went to see you last year. I mean, we've seen you loads of times, but we went to see you last year on the Never Loved Elvis tour and I remember coming away from it and that was what me and my friends were saying that you go and you just like you forget that you know every song every word to every song and it's such an lovely experience going to see you guys <laughs> I don't know what it is but it um well I think it's because I can't believe that it's like 30 years since these albums came out <laughs> Yeah, we've heard them a lot, haven't we? I think we some. Have, I think but... particularly with Never Loved Elvis, it's quite a joyful record. Yeah. Um, the same isn't true of Construction from the Modern Idiot, which is what what we're touring um, this July. Yeah. Um, 
although I'm getting, I think musically that it's quite joyful. I was just on a, a call with Mark Tree, so a guitarist, because uh, I like to make these little teaser videos to put on YouTube yeah. to say tickets are on sale and here's <laughs> me rehearsing. Um, and uh, a lot of it, I mean, things like I Wish Them All Dead, Cabin Fever, Storm Drain, which is a three we've looked at today. I haven't played them since 1993 or 94. <laughs> And yep. I think this thing swell. We never played live. I think I'm quite right in saying that. Uh -huh. So Mount works them out, and then we have little FaceTimes, and he's like, "Well, you could do this because my plan is not to play guitar, okay, um, on a lot, at least eight of the songs from Construction, because we've got Mark Gemini Thwaite playing guitar with us now. Yeah, he's a, he's a genius, <laughs> um, and he works everything out perfectly. So we don't need me clattering away in the background <laughs> while Malk and MGT get it all right <laughs> and then also a lot of these songs that's my dog winky in the background hello um, winky <laughs> <laughs> uh, hold on shut it <laughs> thanks you've um, got the wrong idea it was only winks that i really wanted on this call <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure there'll be more um so um yeah and, and also mm. you know these are songs that i sang 30 years ago and I've smoked a billion cigarettes <laughs> since and worse. on occasion. <laughs> um, So I'm a slightly concerned about yeah. um, pitching up to some of these songs just because re I mean, after a couple of days, I'll be fine. It, yeah. It's just um, because I haven't sung them mm -hmm. in all these years. Whereas a lot of Never Loved Elvis I've, I've sung yeah, all, you've, all uh -huh. through the years. So it's that's almost like muscle memory. So where I have to get it to a point where I'm not thinking about it. Yeah. And the, and it just comes out. And I think well, it's funny. I was in a conversation with a couple of friends this week. One friend, Ian Prowse is on tour mm -hmm. and I went to see him Friday. And then by, I didn't notice it when he was doing the show, but at the end of the show, he said, you know, I can't stay up boozing because the throat's a little bit tired. Uh -huh. So I've got to get some kip. And, but I could see the, the cons it, I could see that it wasn't a physical thing. It was the thing that I see in a lot of singers' eyes where you're just getting concerned. And once <laughs> you start to get concerned, uh -huh. you start messing up, it starts to become a physical thing. And then yeah. another friend of mine from Gigolo Aunts I was emailing with today, and he was saying how when they would tour with Counting Crows, Adam Duritz uh, used to have quite a few problems um mm -hmm. did well they they would do like 100 dates in a row you know i mean I think uh -huh. they did like 20 or 30 yeah and and against um steve hurley from jiggler once was going you know i would always think it was a psychological thing rather than a physical thing yes you, just because you want to do well and if particularly if you're playing new songs or songs you haven't done in a long time yeah you, wor you worry unnecessarily so well i uh, think you know there's so many worries nowadays about covid and still you know yeah. you're always thinking at the back of your mind is this going ahead or is something going to get in the way so i suppose the slightest little cough yeah. or splutter and you think oh god that's it you know the whole tour's yeah <laughs> gone but um I'm very excited for the construction tour, though, and, uh, you know, it's going to be great because, again, you kind of, you know, you, you don't always listen to full albums all the time. You sometimes just dip in or a song will come up on a playlist or something. And then when you go back to listen to the album, though, you, you forget just how amazing these songs are. And it's going to be so good to see it out on the road again. I think there, if you I can think remember them really all. <laughs> good. Yeah, I I think it's it's a very odd album for me because I think two of the best songs the wonder stuff ever released are on construction mm -hmm. and then at least three of the worst thing we ever <laughs> release are, are on the album so i i would say on the ropes and sing the absurd are like real high points yeah in our my writing abilities uh-huh and then there's tracks like i wish them all dead cabin fever and swell uh-huh which uh, I I didn't write the music. I think I'm right in saying that the music to Wish Them All Dead was Malk. Uh -huh. Cabin Fever was Fiddly Bell. And I think Swell was Malk. Um, uh -huh. But I ruined all three of those songs by writing really, really lazy lyrics that I, do, I think they're absolute rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember the mood that I was in at the time was just, I'll mm -hmm. just get this done, get this uh, done. Uh -huh. And because um, we wrote like 25, 28 songs for it. Yeah. And, and uh, 
I think we put a lot of the really good songs on the B-sides. Uh-huh. So it's entirely my fault. It's nobody else's fault. I ruined three three really good <laughs> bits of music with r- lazy lyrics. Because so. I was going to say to you, you know, I mean, you've obviously written millions of songs, but there must be some that maybe you don't prefer to sing anymore or not necessarily just the ones that are like the, I was going to say the cliches. You know, if you ask anybody, do they know anything about the wonder stuff? I guess they always say size of a cow, which I think if I were you, I'd be annoyed about that. Because no, I love it. I love yeah. Size of a Cow. I mean, I'm it's really... a great song, but I always think there's so much more that, you know, yeah. you wish people knew more. But, you, you know, but if if you think about, um, you know, there's, there's I don't know everything by Madness, for instance, no. but um, there are tracks on their first album that you would never hear on the radio. Yeah. The Bed and Breakfast Man. Yeah. Um, mm which is one of one of my favorite songs I've ever heard but no you're always going to hear my girl or it must be love that they <laughs> didn't even write or you think about squeeze there are hundreds of genius squeeze songs uh-huh. but on the radio it's always going to be called for cats in this well, country anyway. unless it's my radio because right. I, I have free reign because I'm community okay. radio and I love it for that reason because in fact funny you said bed and breakfast man but I was actually trying to get a holy trinity of three songs linked together about breakfast for no apparent reason oh, well, there you uh, go. and it nearly made it I haven't done it yet but I might okay. still do it <laughs> but that's just <laughs> the nature like of things and, and the songs mm-hmm. that are picked by uh, you know the classic British bands are great songs and mm-hmm. and I my view of the success, the commercial success of Size of a Cow, if that's the one that national radio is going to be playing all the time, mm-hmm. well, at least I got one in there. Because, <laughs> you know, it still is on the radio somewhere yeah. in the UK every week. Absolutely. And, and to me, if that's next to uh, Call for Cats and a great mat or baggy trousers, then mm-hmm. I'm chuffed to bits. You know, I, I got I got one in the really good book of British pop songs. I got yeah. one. Yeah. Um, and the only song I, I would never sing again is Astley in the Noose. I think musically it's rubbish. It's a joke. So uh, you can only tell a joke so many times before it just ain't funny anymore. <laughs> and it's cruel because uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with Rick Astley at all. <laughs> all. All I had to do was, if, if his early music offended me in some way, was just not listen to it. Mm. I, I didn't have to say something unpleasant to him. Yeah. about him publicly so <laughs> i would never sing that again i hate it yeah I, I i suppose that fits in with what i was thinking about um you know back to the 90s and the the sort of the wonder stuff and the career at the times i mean i i couldn't quite remember if you had a good relationship with like nme and melody maker or not do you know like yeah. I, I couldn't quite um we did what, all of yeah we were very lucky i was just reading wayne hussey's book oh yeah um from the mission and mm-hmm. um and they would get treated well by Melody Maker, but the only time NME would write anything about them, it wasn't just a bad, it was abusive, mm-hmm. um, which uh, was, that was the start of the enemy. We were really lucky. We had mm-hmm. fans at both the enemy, Melody Maker and Sands and Record Mirror. Yeah. We were really lucky. No, the, we weren't just um, shoved in, into one of them. Mm-hmm. Um, but particularly at enemy that there, there were a couple of writers that would have a go at us so in in like you know make up stuff in the gossip columns or just you know mm-hmm. if it was if we'd had too many good reviews i think the editor would go it's about time <laughs> we saw the wonder stuff from a different angle yeah. so then they'd send out that miserable guy and and they <laughs> they would know and i would know as well because my ex-wife used to work there and she's like oh i'm sorry to tell you it's so and so that's coming to review you <laughs> so prepare yeah. yourself <laughs> yeah, but yeah and they by by that time by by never loved elvis and construction for the modern i, I didn't look at the press i didn't didn't really care to be <laughs> Um, so can we talk about lockdown? Because obviously, as you sort of touched upon there, I think before we started recording um, or proper talking, um, it was obviously a strange old time. But you were one of these artists that, well, I don't know if you embraced it or if you were just as bored as anything and you wanted to do something on a Saturday afternoon. But um, I really enjoyed watching your your Sunday, uh, Saturday sofa sessions. They were very um, kind of highlight of a boring Saturday afternoon. Yeah, yeah. It's a, well, I'll take that as a good review. <laughs> um, 
No, I um, my my good friend of again, you know, Ian Prowse, he started the Friday night ones, um, and it didn't occur to me at all. I'm just I'm not a very good self promoter, so <laughs> even though my mate's doing this. Mm-hmm. It, I it, the thought didn't occur to me. Oh, I should do something like this. It, that, and then my good friend uh, Phil Birchall, who does all our design work and and marketing, mm-hmm. um, he said to me, "You should do this." And I'm like, "Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, I'm a bit sick of doing the acoustic thing." And and he goes, "Come on, you miserable so and so. You know, come <laughs> do one." So I went around his house, uh, and it was like the weekend uh, before the lockdown. So Prazi must have started before. Anyway, mm-hmm. so I uh, so I did one and I really enjoyed it. And I got it, even though I was in my mate's house and then the next six or seven that I did were just in my house. Mm-hmm. I got that kind of rush of adrenaline that I do from a regular gig. Um, yeah. And, and it was really nice. It was it was lovely to know people were out there watching it. I had a very, very easy lock time, lockdown time. My, yeah. my life really wasn't disturbed at all. Mm-hmm. The Wonder Stuff had toured at the end of 2019. I was wanted to take a break from acoustic gigs. Um, Really, the only difference I know a lot of it, it sounds terrible that I was quite happy with it. But you know, lots of other people had appalling times. And yeah. Um, I yeah. was one of the very, very few people that didn't. And the only noticeable thing for me was the pub was shut. You know, was, <laughs> yeah. And you had uh, to drink wine in your sofa at two o'clock in the yeah. afternoon as well. And then, <laughs> then go and sit socially distanced in my neighbour's garden and drink another <laughs> bottle of wine. So. Um, I wanted to ask you, because I'm pretty sure at the time, was it not a sort of cathartic thing as well? Were you not having a feud with your neighbour then or something? <laughs> yeah, at the first one I was. Yeah, yeah it was like I tune was. in next week to see what has happened and the legalities of whatever it was you were fighting about. Yeah, they were awful. <laughs> um, and my plan was to drive them out uh, with exceptionally loud music at yeah. very unsociable hours. I had it all planned out. I've done it before. <laughs> uh, they were interlopers anyway. They were. They, they. I think they only owned that house for about two years, and I've been here mm. twenty eight years. So oh I was, well, I was totally. Uh, I the thought bricks. I had seniority, <laughs> uh, but I think after the row that we had, I think they decided like as soon as they could put it on the market. Uh, so the the one row was enough. And now I have the greatest neighbours in the world. Oh, that's really. good. That's mm. nice. It's worked out well. Um, yeah. It was also a great opportunity to just ogle all your Gretsch guitars when you were on on a Saturday <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> um, I do like them. You have a lovely. Have you got all Gretsch, or have you got any that aren't? No, the two acoustic guitars, the black one and the white uh-huh. one. Uh, this black one that I've just been doing a bit of rehearsing with. with yeah. Uh, that's a Gretsch. And then I've got a yeah. white acoustic that's in the lounge that's a Gretsch. And then that white one on the wall there, that's an Antoria. And then I've got two more of those that are blonde wood. Uh-huh. Uh, so I know I always played Antoria jazz stars. That's all. That's all. There was a period around construction from the modern idiot where Mal wanted me to play a Les Paul. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I did for about a year and I hated it because they're so, they're so heavy. Yeah. Oh, uh-huh. whereas my semi acoustics aren't, aren't that heavy. Uh, yeah. Oh no, I wish I could have afforded a Gretsch White Falcon back oh, in the uh-huh. day. Uh-huh. And I'm still, uh, I'm still working on Billy Duffy uh, from the cult. He's, he's got a signature. I he's know. Billy Duffy White Falcon. It's ridiculously I think he's got black, nice. Yeah, he's got a black signature one as well. And he played on my most recent solo album that came out last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was just about to ask him, get me a deal on one of your signature guitars. <laughs> and he was in Los Angeles when he recorded the parts for my album. And so I then emailed his producer or he's the engineer of his studio. I'm like, can you send me the bill for Billy's studio time? Uh-huh. And he just said, no, Bill's paid for it. I'm like, oh. Bill, I've asked him a favor. I've asked him to write parts and play <laughs> and appear on my record. He can't pay for the studio. So then I wrote to Bill and I'm like, yeah, you got to tell me what it was. I need, need to pay that, uh-huh. give you that money back. And he said, no, no, no. Next, next time I'm back in England, just take me out for a curry. <laughs> And then I was like, damn, now I can't ask him about getting me a discount on. <laughs> That's pushing it a bit now, Miles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Taking advantage of the poor man. Exactly. Oh, awesome. Well, the closest I've got is I've got the um, the Penguin Parlour. So the little the little version of the blingy white one, Penguin. Okay. It's lovely. But yeah, yeah it's gorgeous. Um. 
So just, I don't know who your influences are and sort of what kind of music you were brought up listening to. Well, it was, you know, the glam rock, the cheesy stuff as well as the cool stuff, you know, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Something like Slade is looked upon as a bit cheesy now, although we didn't think so. No. And then I suppose the glam of Bowie and maybe Mark Boland is seen as the cool stuff. I liked mm -hmm. all of that. I liked, you know, I liked all the singles of that period from people like Sweet. And, yeah. and, and then I thought that seamlessly went into punk rock and new wave. I, you know, it was really good. If you think about the four Sex Pistols singles, mm -hmm. you know, they got brilliant choruses, great riffs. They're hard, just like we thought Slade and Sweet were. And mm -hmm. so to me, that was kind of a seamless transition um, to me and my uh -huh. brother, who's three years older than me. So we went with that. And then after that initial flurry of punk rock and new wave, I didn't go with the stuff like Crass and Discharge. Yeah. And, you know, that all seemed that all seemed about something else. It, it wasn't about melodies. They weren't influenced by the Beatles, for instance, like mm -hmm. um, I would say Glenn Matlock from the Pistols was a, obviously a Beatles fan. And yeah. so even though the Pistols were writing an aggressive, different kind of pop music, it was still pop music. And the mm -hmm. ideas came from the masters of writing British pop music. So, um, mm -hmm. So things like Crass and Discharge and those angrier punk bands, did, it didn't work for me. There, there wasn't enough yeah. melody there. So yeah. I went to things like um, The Bunny Men, Teardrop Explodes, yeah. Magazine, um, you know, things like that. And then, yeah. and then the Water Boys turned up and I was like, ah, I think this is my band. Because <laughs> I was about to say, you know, I don't sort of see a lot of that style in the wonder stuff but then you said the water boys that kind of made a little bit of sense i think on eight legged groove machine you can hear like the punk rock new wave mm. glam rock influence i mean things like give 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 me more 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 uh -huh. and uh and it's your money i'm after baby i, th I yeah. think they would have fitted in either yeah. glam rock or new wave at least yeah um not so much in a sort of post-punk era uh -huh. um and yeah, it's not until we get to the second album that we introduce fiddles, accordions, mandolins, keyboards, mm -hmm. and then we really go in that direction for Neville of Delvis. And then we just yeah. tried to pull it back in on construction and make it a bit harder. Mm -hmm. But that was probably not going back to the earlier influences. That was probably the records of the day Yeah, we were into, which would be uh, Jane's Addiction and Faith No More predominantly. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, so just kind of a wee bit about the tour, because I was thinking, you know, is it different out on tour nowadays than it was in the 90s? Are you all quite sort of a oval teen at 10 o'clock in bed or is it still a bit wild? It's not, We were never that wild, not <laughs> not compared to what I've just read in the Wayne Hussey's second autobiography. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to need you read that. <laughs> yeah, n none of us were thrown out of the country by the police or anything so uh <laughs> I think we were thrown out of Bristol by the police as <laughs> troublesome as we got. Um, but no, you know, I, I I learned a long time ago, I can stay up and have a drink and a laugh with everyone and my throat's okay as long as I get a solid 10 hours kip. Ah, uh, okay. Uh -huh. So I don't usually get up to like 2, 3 in the afternoon if we're uh -huh. on a tour because we're on a tour bus, I can do that. Yeah. Uh, and then just walk around humming for two hours, then go do a sound check. So I can stay up till like, 2 a.m. having a giggle with my mates. Um, humming as in because you're stinky because you're on a tour bus or humming no, as no, in? No, 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 humming as in. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that. Just checking. <laughs> yeah, warms your voice up all day. It's it's uh, it's better than talking. Ah, okay, uh, fair enough. Just to, just to warm it up. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we were, we were never crazy, but we have, no. we have a, a, a wee bit of social time af after every gig, yeah. Yeah. Yes. No, that's good. It's cool. Um. What do you, when do you think, if you can ever say this, when would you stop being in the wonder stuff? When do you think, or do you think you can just keep going and you'll always have something new to, to write? Um, I think it's up to the other members, really. I, I think if any one person left now, mm -hmm. um, I, I'm not in the mood to ever try and replace anybody else. Yeah. Um, Mostly because this lineup, in terms of musicianship, is is the best we've ever had. Uh huh. 
Um, so if Pete Howard wanted to hang up his sticks, then I would never find anyone yeah. as, as good as Pete. Um, uh-huh. we, we all get on so well. If Erica, you know, Erica lives out in Paris, she's got her own mm-hmm. music career. If she ever said, uh, you know, that she didn't want to do it anymore, then I know I would never find anyone as hardworking yeah. and as talented as her. So yeah. I think if, if anyone left, then I wouldn't carry on. Uh huh. But then you would kind of end it on a high, wouldn't you? As oh, you yeah. say, rather than sort of scrappling about trying to find a yeah somebody you don't really want there. Um, exactly. I've absolutely no idea. Have I done half an hour? That might be about that. I don't want to keep you too long. We are long. ready. Yeah. Get, get five more minutes. Get your most important questions, and then I'm going. The to most have to important run. questions are: Why did you grow your hair again? Because it was all short in lockdown. What What made you decide? <laughs> well, I I. I don't have to do anything. It just does it. <laughs> no, you were just happy you could still grow it, weren't you? So you yeah, you well, I got off the end of the 2019 tour and Christmas Eve, I just went, zap, got it, got rid of it. And I'm like, oh, that feels better. Uh-huh. Because I was definitely going to take 2020 off, but then what happened, happened. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, we're all taking 2020 off. Um, <laughs> and I, I thought I would never go out and do an anniversary tour of construction uh-huh but my friend phil taught me into it turns out the rest of the band wanted to do it uh-huh. um and so i thought well i think people i think people expect the singer in the wonder stuff to have long hair so i just left well, it and- it was it was kind of like your sort of trademark it was quite odd when you didn't have it and then when i saw you'd grown it again i thought ah oh, that's uh the normal service has been resumed <laughs> <laughs> and um have you got any more albums you're going to do this uh sort of anniversary tour of because i'm trying to do the maths but we've got another few years till eight-legged groove machine can go for its uh anniversary so yeah that would be a 40 year anniversary i suppose <laughs> in 2000, 2028 um no i'm not thinking that far ahead no i mean i think um we've talked in the last year about doing a 10th wonder stuff album mm-hmm. i think it'd be nice to round it off on 10 uh i ain't really got any ideas at the moment yeah uh no doubt when we get into rehearsals in july uh i'll ask everybody else got anything See how we get on. I think everyone wants to do one, and it makes sense to round it off at ten. Yeah. Um, You're in... yeah, I'm, th- I'm not thinking about it at the minute. No. Well, you've still you've got construction to get through first, and uh, yeah. you've obviously got that kind of in the two parts. Um, I've got my tickets for Birmingham at the end of the year, so that'll be a nice pre-Christmas ah, treat. Great. But uh, I've still to decide if I'm coming to Glasgow because it's the first night of the tour, isn't it? And I obviously I feel well, you... should do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I think we'll be all right. We're we're sticklers for rehearsal, so yeah. I, don't, I don't think it's a case of the first gig being a bit sticky. You know, I th- I not think in we'll, Glasgow. Glaswegians we'll exactly. are very nice. Exactly, we have a great <laughs> audience there. Yeah, we're up for a party. And I think it's a is it a Saturday? Is it? A, uh, no idea. No, I can't remember now. Uh, Even if it's not, to be fair, it makes no difference to Glaswegians. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> Well, I'm going to let you go because okay. you've got lots of things to do. But thank you so much for spending a wee bit of time talking to me. That's very much oh, appreciated. No, I'm more than happy. Thanks for asking me. No worries. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on tour very soon then. Yeah, cool. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Jude. Thank you very much. And I'll speak right. to you later. Thank okay, you. Okay, see you again. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye-bye.